Hi, I'm Crafty Patty, and today we're going to be making rope balls. Fun! This one here I've made out of quarter inch rope, which I prefer because it's a little bit stiffer and it holds its shape a bit more. This particular one I made from 7 30 seconds rope, and it still makes a beautiful basket, but it's a little bit more flimsy, but depends on what you like. This has a little bit more of a finer look. This is a little bit more coarser. And of course, um, I will leave a link in the description box below where you can find the rope that you need to do this project. I actually bought this from my local hardware store. You might be able to find it there. You might be able to find it at Walmart, but if you can't, check out the links below and that'll help you out. I'm gonna be showing you how to start your bowl on the sewing machine. I'm gonna be showing you how to finish off with a looped edge. I'll also show you how to make cute little handles. And that's what we're going to be showing you in this video today. In a future video, once you got the handle, ha ha ha, once you got the handle, um, on how to make a nice flat bottom, then I will show you how to add the fabric. It's a little bit more tricky to be holding on the fabric and using the rope and sewing at the same time. So I suggest we start with this type of basket first and then we'll advance to this. And I will show you this coming up probably a couple weeks after I post this video. If you find some cording that says synthetic core, I wouldn't worry about it. Inside, it looks just like this. The synthetic fibers are inside and the cotton wraps around it. You can sew through that just fine. So along with your rope, you're going to be needing some scissors. You'll need four sewing pins. Embroidery thread if you do want to do the embellishments on the outside to hide your sewing last edge. You'll need lots of thread and I suggest you pre-wrap quite a few bobbins if you've got extra bobbins then that would be great and we're going to be using just a crochet hook this is just to help to hold in your edges when you're sewing it just aids in the help of pulling the ropes together um, some people have used what they call a stiletto I do not have such an item and I cannot find it where I live. So crochet hook will work just fine. Just to give you an idea on how much cording it takes up, this particular basket here, I used 40 feet for this one. Okay, Crafty Patty does not have, I mean, I've got a great machine, but I don't have the state of the art machine where it's all the bells and whistles. So. What I've done here is I've gotten a magazine. I've gotten two of my painting panels. I've just kept finding things until it was the same level as my sewing machine. Because you'll find when you're working your circles and they get bigger and bigger, it's really a good idea to keep it at the same level. So the first thing you should do is unravel your cord of rope and then just roll it up into a ball. I've got my ball all wound up here and I'm just going to place this on the floor just to the left of my sewing machine and then I can just have this pulling out of my ball. To keep your ends from unraveling from the center of your basket, I just like to take a piece of scotch tape and then wrap it around I'm not trying to get it on the end right now. I'm just wrapping it around here. And then what I want to do is I just want a little piece of tape. So I'm going to just cut this so there's only about a quarter inch of the tape still on. So I'm cutting right down. Just enough to hold the cording in place, but not so much that you see all this tape in your basket. And now that'll stay nice and tight. 
For your sewing needle, you can probably get away with using your ordinary needle, but I have just in case, I've put in my jeans needle. You could use a leather needle or a jeans needle. It's just that little bit stronger and it'll do just perfectly for this type of project. You'll be using a zigzag stitch to sew your pieces of rope together as we go along to make the basket. So on my Husqvarna machine, I'm gonna go as high as I can get, which is five and a half. That's for my width, and for my length, I'm going to set it at four. It can go up to six, but I find it's just too difficult to sew a long zigzag when you're trying to go around the little tiny spaces at the beginning of your project. Okay, so your first step is to take your little taped end, and we're going to tuck that right in, and we're going to just wrap it around. So once you've got your four, you're going to take some pins and just poke it right into the side and bring it all the way through into the middle. Now I'm not going to sew onto my last row here. I'm only going to sew from the third row down. So just this middle part here. The only reason I've wrapped another part on the outside is so the presser foot will catch it and feed it in for me easier. I'll take that out. Clip off your threads. So I've sewed down this way, and now I'm going to sew down between these pins and come this way. Again, I'm only going to go into my third row here. I'm going to pull out these pins. Because I want to back stitch in the middle here just to secure that middle and then come all the way through and back stitch. You can take out your pins, clip your threads. Okay, so this is the part that didn't get sewn, which is fine. We don't want that to be sewn. Now the trick is always have your cord coming off the right side and we're going to wrap clockwise. Okay, so the round part will always be coming off to the left because that's where we want it to come up so we've got enough room where we can bend our bowl to bring it up. We won't be able to do it this way, it's got to be this way. So now go back to your zigzag stitch which was five and a half for me and four. Now what I'm going to be doing is I have a split in my zigzag foot here. This is my guide that I'm going to use to be in the middle of this section here. So right here, because I know it's hard to see on camera, I'm going to match up in between my cord with the middle of my pressure foot. Presser foot, sorry. I have a bad habit of saying pressure foot. So now we're in the middle here. I've put my pressure press their foot down. And on this first part, I tend to just do it manually. What I'm doing is I'm just manually pulling this around rather than using my foot on the pedal. And then you're only gonna get to go about two times, lift your foot, and bring it around, matching up your opening of your foot to where these are joined together. Again, do a couple more, turn. And this is the fiddly part. Once you've got it going around, this, these first few 
rows, then you'll be on the way. Now, if this rope is bothering you, all you have to do, lift your pressure foot, roll it around, and it'll be out of your way. I'm also going to cut off these ends here so that doesn't get in my way. Pressure foot goes down again. And now we're only going to do these first few very, very slowly. I'm just guiding it with my thumb for now. And I'm using my fingers here to pull it around to turn it in the circle. Once you've got enough done here, you can remove it from your left thumb and just let it slide through your thumb on this side. Your fingers are going to be holding down, so they're going to be pulling it through. So now you should be able to go a little bit faster. Again, you're not pulling on the rope. You're going to let that just naturally just pull around by itself. I've got my rope just gliding over my thumb here. And I'm holding with my fingers here and my fingers here and I'm pulling it around. I'm not pulling on the rope. It will naturally go in. I've also got my finger, my baby finger here, just guiding it in a little bit, but not much. Now, as you'll see, I have run out of bobbin thread and I didn't notice. I went all that way without the bobbin thread. Okay, so this is why you want to keep another bobbin ready to go. And it's okay to just um, stop and start like that. All you do is you go back, find out where you finished, just go back a little bit further back, and then start again. Back stitch, and then away we go again. And now you decide how big you want the bottom of your basket to be. Just for an example, this one here is approximately five inches or I'm not good in centimeters, about 13 centimeters. So I want this one to be wider. So I'm going to go till it's approximately maybe, I don't know, seven or eight. I'm going to see. And by the way, my little makeshift table here is working really well. As you can see, if you don't have an extension on your sewing machine for the, the bed of your sewing machine, this would be flopping all over the place. So now it's just coming right over my little boards that I've put up here and it's allowing my arm to rest on here. So if you need to do this as well, you go for it. Or you might be lucky and have one of those beautiful sewing machines. But we do what we have to do to make the job work, right? Now you could stop right here and this would be a beautiful eight inch coaster. And look at, as you can see, because I've got my little flat bed here, it's perfectly flat and that's what you want. No doming. I also promised I would show you how to join your cording if you ran out. So let's do that now. So let's say you've just run out of some cord. I'm going to take a piece of tape again and I'm going to wrap my end with the tape. And again, I don't want a lot of my tape showing. 
So I'm going to cut it so there's only about a quarter inch of the tape on there. So I'm going to cut it right back. Okay, that's the, that end. Now I'm going to find my next end that I'm going to join. Again, grab a piece of tape. Okay, so we've sewn up to this one. Now I'm going to really push this up, even so it just tends to butt it out just that little bit. And then I'm going to come in with a pin and just pin that in to hold it in place. I'm just going to put one more in here. So now that it's pushing it out a little bit, which is fine because when I go to push this back in, it's going to come in and it's going to be nice and tight together in here. All right, so I'm using my crochet hook, or if you've got a stiletto, use that. And now I just hold this in here and continue to come around. Pushing it in. And once you're at that seam, I'm going to backspace. And then come forward again. And now you can take your pins out. And you've done a nice, beautiful join. Okay. Now I want to start bringing my edge of my bowl up. And I'm going to do a nice gentle rounding. So let's just say I'm going to start my rounding is going to be here. So let's just bring the pin down here so we don't sew over the pin. So it'll be just right there. It will be my marker. So when I get to here, I'm going to start to lift up the basket. So we'll go around. Right now we're still flat. Okay, so I've matched up with my pin now. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to lift up with my hand and holding with my thumb here and this will help to guide it along. So now I'm going to go around three times. So this will be number the start of number one. So around we go. I've backed my pin so I know I've gone around once. And one more time around. This is actually where we join the two pieces of rope so you can hardly even see it. Okay, I had my hand angled like this, and you can see how it's already starting to curve. Now I'm going to bring my hand up so it's almost parallel like this, and hold on to it like this. And I'm going to go around three more times. So here's our starting point, and I'm going to go around three times. Now I'm going to come up so there's about three inches between the basket and my sewing machine and I'm going to go around two times. I've gone around two times and now I'm going to bring it up so I'm just about flush 
with my sewing machine and I'm going to go around two more times. And now I'm going to have it so my basket is sitting vertically and I'm going to go around until I've got the height that I want on my basket. So I've got the height that I want now, so I'm just going to back stitch. And I'm going to take it off of the machine for now to do some measurements for my handles. Now to make our handle, I'm going to measure from where we stop sewing. So from here, I'm going to measure out six inches. And I'm going to put a pin in there. And now I'm going to measure along the bowl from where we stop sewing up to five inches. And we'll put the pin in at the five inch mark. And that will be the size of my handle. So I'm just going to work it along. So I know that this here is the middle of the other side. I'm just going to put a pin right there in the middle. So on this side, we're going to do the same. So five inches would be two and a half. So there's my two and a half inch mark right there. So I know that I want to stop my cord, or I should say start my handle, right here on the other side. So I'm just going to come inside the basket and just put a pin mark right here. And I'm going to come around to my five inch mark. And I know I want to attach the other part of my handle at the five inch mark right there. So again, I'm just going to move this pin down into the basket here so I don't sew into it. I'll just give me a guideline. I can take this pin out. So when I'm sewing along, I'll sew here, and then once I get to here, I'm going to measure six inches of cord and then bring it down to my five inch mark. So here's our first handle where we've pulled it out and we've measured six inches, but we've put it back into the five inch mark. So we're just going to slide it in. And we're going to come up to where the pin is. And this is where we're going to start sewing. So I'm just going to get it down here. So I just need to bring my pin out a little bit so I can grab it. Okay. So I've just got that into my second cord in here. Not this one, it's in this one. I'm going to put down my presser foot and take out my pin. And this is where you can use a tool if you feel like you need to. And I'm going to just pull this in. I just did three stitches this way. I'm going to back stitch. Back stitch three. And around we go till we get to my other pin mark. So we're going to go around till we get to the other pin. I just want to show you is what I'm doing now is for holding because it's a little bit big and floppy is right now I'm holding right up here while I'm sewing so as I go along I'm holding right here now I'm getting to the marking of my first pin so I'm just going to go up to my pin here and then back stitch, back to my pin, pressure, or sorry, the needle down. From where my pin is and where my needle's down, I'm going to measure along here and measure six inches. Okay, and that's going to be my other handle. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to sew into just this one. So I'm going to angle my basket. So I'm going to come in and sew only this part here. Once I've got an angle, I can just go along and just sew this portion right here. So I'm going to sew up to my pin.
Now I can take my pin out because I don't want to sew on top of it. I can use my tool here to keep it tight. And now I want to angle my basket, so I'm now going to stitch into both of these. Now, sew around till we get to the first handle. Now we're getting close to our handle. I'm just going to be pushing this in and then we're going to bring the handle out. So we'll just put these together here. And then I'm going to turn my basket. My basket's almost to the back of my sewing machine now. Now we can go around again till we get to the other handle again. Now we're back to the first handle. We've done three rounds on our first handle and we've done three rounds here. So to make it look like the basket is even, we're going to cut this off now and blend this in. Now I got a little bit too close, so I'm just going to back stitch here a bit. So I'm going to end the basket right before the handle starts. So that's where I'm going to cut the end. And then just to make it blend in a bit better, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to angle it and cut into it. So only half of it is on that last bit of it. Of course, trying to be in camera <laughs> and cut with my left hand is a little bit awkward. I could take it off of the sewing machine and do this, which would be a lot easier, but I don't want to do that because I'm being lazy. But the idea is just to angle it down so it gets lower and lower and lower. So it blends in nicely. And I'm going to hold this all nice and smooth into here. I'm going to use this to keep it in there. I just want to pull it out just to see what I've done. So I'm just going to clean this up just a little bit more, force those strands back into the basket, and I'm just going to do a couple more passes to make that nice and clean. But you can see the idea where it's just beveled it down. So here's our finished basket. Remember we had about an eight inch bottom. There's our eight inch bottom. And then we brought our sides up. And now we've got about a 12 inch basket or bowl. And here's the fun thing with the handles. We sew them this way, but if you just flip them like this, 
it makes a kind of fun little handle that way. I love that. Like so. This little cute guy here that I'm using for my jewelry is actually a mistake. So mistakes could actually turn out fun too. So <laughs> what happened on this one is that remember I was talking about not pulling on your cords too tight and not um, having any weight on your cording. Well, what happens is it will don't. So you see, I can't get really a flat, <laughs> a flat bottom on this one because it was doming and that's the reason. So instead, what I did with this one is I just made it into something cute. So I poked it in the middle, poked the middle down again, and now I've got this darling little place to hold my jewelry and my rings. So how about that, eh? Sometimes mistakes turn out fun. And here's another basket, and I promised the other type of um, finishing off with looping it in and making the handle like this. So here we go. And this is going to be folded in. So I'm just going to make a little bit of an angle on this one again. Like so. Tuck that into the middle. I'm pushing against this one. But I'm going to sew this one in place. So I'm going to just really tuck it in there. Press it in really tight. Once you've gone along a little bit, now back stitch. And now we're going to come in and we're going to sew these two together. This one and this one now. And now I'm going to continue on and sew straight through this way. And there you go. Look at all these baskets. I love it. So today we showed you how to make this great big basket with an 8 inch bottom measuring about 12 inches on the top and we showed you how to do the handles and I also showed you how to do the looped in handle and depending on how you vary when you're sewing if you're lifting it up a little bit more a little bit more you get different shapes. So if you come right up, you're gonna get a nice straight side. If you angle it slowly, you're gonna get the nice curved side. So many options and so many uses, and they're great for gifts. So keep watching and subscribe because in a couple more weeks, I'm gonna show you how to use the same rope, but we're gonna wind it with fabric scraps and then you'll end up with a really colorful, beautiful basket as well. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.